Here is a very typical experiment that someone may do to investigate osmosis. And you can see here we can use potatoes or other types of potato-like substances, yams, sweet potatoes. In Japan here, people like the sweet potato a lot. It's called a emo, which is what I was like when I was a young teenager. That's not funny. Anyways, osmolarity, we've talked about before. This term is basically, here's a fancy way to say it with some units here. Osmolarity is referring to the moles of solute particles per unit volume of solution. That sounds really mathematical. What it's basically saying is, in plain English, this is what you should be thinking in your head, how much salt is dissolved in a given amount of liquid, basically. So we're talking about concentration, but you can calculate your salt or your solute, not just in terms of mass or grams, but you can actually calculate the number of moles. And uh, if you do chemistry, you'll understand that. If not, uh, you'll figure it out. The number of moles can be figured out by just using the chemical formula and some knowledge of a periodic table. Anyways, here's the typical example. Um, for example, pure water would have zero osmolarity because there's nothing inside pure water. That's what you're going with. So we've talked about the words hypotonic and hypertonic. Uh, plant cells absorb water from the surroundings if the surroundings are hypotonic. So if there's less salt, remember, think about it as saltiness. If there's less salt around the outside, then actually the water is going to move to the saltier areas, so it's actually going to go into the cells. And if we're talking about a potato, we're talking about uh, water getting into the actual potato cells. So to estimate uh, what you're going to do, you set up an experiment. The basic setup is you have a bunch of different beakers with different solutions, and they're prepared with different solute concentrations that you've calculated. So one could be you know 0 0.2 uh, moles per liter. One could be 0 0.3 moles per liter, and you could have five or six or seven or eight of these different prepared, uh, pre prepared, huh? is there another word? Pre prepared solutions. Prepared? Interesting. Anyways, you have these solutions that are already prepared. And then what you're going to do is you're you're trying to figure out what the actual osmolarity of the potato tissue is. So if you can already kind of predict what's going to happen, we're going to cut up little potato pieces into exact similar size chunks, drop them into these different beakers, and see if the water goes in or out. And we're going to figure that out by uh, measuring them before and afterwards. So you're going to cut the tissue into equal sample sizes and size and shape. There's little things that can help you punch out uh, exact shapes. Uh, one second, let me close the door. You're going to measure the mass of each of these samples and so you can compare it afterwards. You're going to bathe these samples in each type of solution until you get a measurable mass change. You're going to remove and then dry the samples, find the mass, and you're going to calculate the percentage mass change. It's very simple. It's the final mass minus the initial mass you started with divided by the initial mass multiplied by 100 to get a percentage. And then you're going to plot the results on a graph to find out the solute con concentration, concentration that would give no mass change. I'll show you a sample graph in a little bit. So you want to really make sure you're measuring carefully using volumetric flasks, especially when you're trying to calculate molarity of solutions and make sure the balances that you're using are pretty uh, accurate and uh, to a number of decimal places so you can detect even small changes. So if you actually plot everything and you get a particular graph that looks something like this, you can see that the percentage mass change where it hits zero, then that should be your estimated uh, tissue osmolarity of the potato sample that you're actually using. In this case, you're using sodium chloride, but it could be a completely different solute or salt that you are actually using. So quick formula for osmolarity if you have any kind of solution that you're working with. Uh, so to prepare your solutions, if I need to make a 0.4 mole solution that I'm going to put, I'm going to figure out the, the osmolarity by dividing the number of moles of the solute by the unit volume of the solution. Hopefully that made sense. Try this experiment out. Have a good day.